back to my YouTube channel. My name is Bo Renee Frank, and I am here to tell you about another subject in regards to how to help out emerging artists. And today, the subject of choice is how to create a collection. Now, this is probably one of the most difficult things an artist can undertake because this will be challenging your patience, your dedication, and also your technical abilities. And it's all about getting outside your comfort zone while using the knowledge that you've already acquired so far in your artistic career. So just to briefly go over the four um, points that I'll be discussing in depth. One, to create a collection, it takes an idea. Two, you have to have a story. Three, there needs to be a branding identity. And then four, time management. So starting from the top, the idea, um, what do I mean by this? In order to begin, something like a huge collection, you have to start somewhere, and usually that comes with an idea. Now, how do you come up with an idea that's worth pursuing over a series of many paintings, many drawings, what it is that you do, doesn't matter the medium, what matters is the inclination. So, in order to get to that point where you have this well thought out idea, this com composition of what you want to create, you need to have a vision, meaning creating a thumbnail sketch, doing a lot of little, um, little doodles, Otherwise, it's brainstorming, throwing ideas around the room, jotting down thoughts and writing them in words, vocalizing, asking for feedback from others, and if you don't know where to start, sometimes looking at other artists to get inspired or look at others that you're envious about, it's a great way to start that internal dialogue to start asking yourself, what do you actually like? Like, what is your personal taste? What would you feel confident and comfortable and also excited to create in the form of a visual painting. So that's one ideas. So what comes next is two, storytelling. Storytelling is the narrative that you'll be exploring over the course of several pieces. Now, this is really complicated because you wanna create a series that has diversity and individual chapters that can explore a theme or an emotion or a message, something that you want to convey to others that is a conversation starter. So basically what you're trying to capture through these paintings is an emotion. That's the biggest thing. What does it make you feel? What does it remind you of? What kind of place does it transport you to? Because just like photography, just like movies, just like music, just like foods, when you taste these things, when you feel these things, you're taken back to a moment in time where you're embodying that emotion, like a little reminder. Now to be able to capture that through storytelling takes a lot of practice, it takes a lot of focus, and it takes a lot of breaking down into well thought out ideas. So storytelling is crucial to having a cohesive collection. And then comes number three, the branding identity. So what is it about this series that makes it your series? Like what is your personal touch on this collection? And it's all about the style. It's all about the little, the type of color palette that you use. It's also the subjects that you use. Do you feel like there's something that is invoked in each of these paintings even though they're all different. The packaging, the branding identity, making sure that the first piece and the second piece are somewhat on the same uh, same wavelength but essentially you want it to be a unified collection and that's all in branding and essentially branding is kind of just like a broken down version of storytelling but instead of the actual story, it's the way the story is conveyed. It's the tone, it's the voice. Something about it makes it your painting. Not someone else's, your painting. All right, so you've got your idea down, you've done your thumbnail sketches, you maybe messed around in Photoshop, and you maybe have two or three pieces lined up for what would be a cool story to start, or maybe you just have one, and you wanna see if this is worth exploring past this one painting that you're initially starting with. But the last one, and probably the most important one, that without this one, everything that I just said is totally useless, this one is time management. Now, time management is probably one of the most difficult things to do and to embrace as a young adult, as a kid in high school, in college, 
out of high school, as an adult, as an emerging artist, as a professional working artist, as a single mom, as a kid with loans, like doesn't matter where you are, time management is the most difficult, but also the most important quality. Because if you're not able to structure in time to create this collection, the collection ain't getting made by itself. So what do I suggest? I suggest that you work into your daily routines a block of time where you can create and just show up in the studio and work towards this collection. And some days you'll have two hour window, great, you work for two hours. Sometimes it's after your shift, after a long day of work, great, you'll clock in maybe 15, 20 minutes. Or say, hey, I feel like painting this morning, even though it's my day off, I'm gonna paint because I'd like to see how far I can take this collection. That's the kind of mentality you wanna be thinking about when you're creating a series, and that's the kind of mentality that a professional working artist thinks. It's called doing work, and no one else is gonna do it for you but yourself. So being able to find structure and having a routine where you know exactly where you're gonna be gives you this relief where you don't have to think about it. You can just show up and know that this is what needs to be done. And by doing that, each and every day, you end up making steady progress. Because usually paintings take a very long time. If you're using oil, it takes a while to dry, so it's a process. And you maybe paint an hour at a time, maybe two hours, depending on the piece. Or maybe you work on several pieces at the same time. Um, creating a collection is a daily investment. It's a sacrifice. Essentially, you're saying no to your friends, maybe saying no to family, maybe saying no to going out and drinking. It's a lot of sacrifice. But then, if this is something that you're serious about, if this is something that you're passionate about, if this is something that you have to share with others or you have to share with yourself, you will make the time. Because if you don't make the time, essentially you're making your art not a priority. And if it's not a priority, then this video is not for you. But if it is a priority, this is exactly like the, the necessary steps it takes to create a collection. And for instance, with my personal collections, I started out doing ink designs and I created several different ink designs with the intention of making them for t-shirts and possibly for tattoos because I was actually looking into doing a tattoo internship. Um, I did that for a while, but it wasn't my style. And I'm really glad I tried that collection out and worked on it over a period of like six months. But eventually I grew out of that and that's when I started working on the Off the Grid collection, which is featuring portraits with landscapes. And it was a way to combine my love of travel with my love of painting and also with like design and composition. And it had this editorial look because I really was passionate about magazines and layouts. And I thought this would be a great way to combine all these different flavors and reimagine it in a way that it's my personal collection. And then from the men's collection, I started working on the women's collection, and now I'm actually thinking about possibilities for future collections, which are kind of on the down low. But if you keep following the journey, then one day you'll find out. Thank you so much for watching. It's been a real pleasure getting to share this knowledge with you, and this is the kind of information that I wish I had when I was starting out. And that's kind of the reason why I started this YouTube channel. It's to be connected with the community that I'm working with, that I'm slowly getting to know, and giving you the knowledge that I wish I had a couple of years ago. And also, the more I talk about it, the more I feel like I'm starting to understand my personal process, which is also helping me with my current um, struggles in art. So thank you so much for listening, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon.